and we have ourselves a little uh quick but surprise podcast interview with the California of uh California State University of Dominguez Hill Ivory uh, or CSU DH Ivory uh this this team we wanted to acquire because they f- a are kind of a up and coming team that I think is very interesting to see what they c- can do what they've done and what they will be doing in the future. Uh, a little bit of history about uh, Ivory is that they were uh, in, they started in season four of CCA uh, as a div- prominent uh, Division six team going four one in the group stage, which uh, and that which were made them playoff eligible. Uh, heading off into the playoffs, f- losing against uh, Splatoon Gold and Core Files with a three uh, with a three five record. Um, but I mean, they they didn't take the uh, win over the playoffs, but they definitely still took the experience they got from there, and they decided to go and participate in something called the CCA Road Trip. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's a California state plan. I'm not, I'm not Florida, as a Florida student, I don't know. That's why I have my friend DRF on the other side. <laughs> I got I'm you kidding. on all things SoCal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, as, but as the season uh, season five CCA has started about what three, two, three weeks away, uh, ago. Um, the Ivory got themselves spread all the way to Division Five, uh, where they've had a pretty good run so far. Uh, they won a Game Seven victory against Undertow Dartfish, their top-seeded uh, team in their group, and they went out to, and they also won in Week Two, uh, fought against Shug Splatoon, um, with uh, I don't remember the record. I think it was a four zero. I, I, I should I should have probably the bracket. <laughs> Anyways, um, but as you know, these are these you know Ivory has really shown like they can beat some really tough opponents. But I mean, there's some new teams on the block that have definitely shown up. You know, uh, USF has shown some uh, victories under their belts, and uh, also uh, SCAD University. Um, so, you know, I, it, it, it is going to be like their B teams from those schools, but their A teams, from the way their A team shows, definitely could say something about their B teams as it comes up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's just a little bit of the recap. I mean, I think it'd be better if we heard from the teams themselves, you know, but like the team, the team themselves about how they, you know, their thoughts and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to go and take that away, DRS. Yeah, so let's go ahead and welcome on in CSUDH Ivory joining us here on this special podcast interview segment. So welcome Jalen and Mish to the podcast. How are you all doing today? Good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, Yeah, I'm doing good as well. Awesome. Well, um, let's go ahead and, uh, I guess, dive on into it. So Elixir had that wonderful introduction uh, covering your team from just our CCA staff perspective. Uh, But obviously there is more to you all. So go ahead and introduce yourselves individually. Tell us a little bit about uh, you and your team. What did we miss there? All right. Well, you you want to go first, Mish, or me? Yes, you can go first. Okay. Well... Hello everyone, my name is Jalen Alexander. I am captain of the Splatoon, the Splatoon Ivory team. Uh, this, and I have Mish with me, this this team was literally like a shot in the dark. Like we, you know, you know, they, they, in our school we have tons of other teams, but this one team specifically, we was like probably the smallest one, like we, that all the other teams were starting their games and then someone I, I checked the discord and i'm like oh we're trying to start a switching team and so uh, originally i wanted to be on the like an overwatch team mm-hmm. but i was like wait i i'm like i, I like Splatoon like a lot so i was just okay let's let me try and get with these people try and start something and now we're here where we are today 
that's that's really nice to hear. Um, <laughs> that's pretty awesome, actually. Hold up. <laughs> now, now this is this is uh, this is a little bit of just an improv question. Do you think you're better at Splatoon or Overwatch? I definitely Splatoon. Overwatch has been falling off like crazy, and so <laughs> I I was just trying to look for like something to like involve myself in. And so I was like, oh, I played a little bit of Overwatch, but then I was like, wait, I play a lot of Splatoon, so I'm gonna switch over to that. Mm, I okay, see. sweet. Um, okay, awesome. Thank you for that intro, Mish. Uh, what about yourself? So my name is Michelle, and it's just piggyback, uh, piggybacking off of what Jalen said. Um, it really was a shot in the dark. I think it started off with uh, one of our other members. Uh, Danny, who kind of set the ball rolling for the rest of us, and we we're like, oh my gosh, we just have three members, we need one more, and then um, our other team member, Miles, ended up joining, so we just had enough for a team. So, um, and they already had a tournament set up for us, which is crazy, and it was the, the CCA, so uh, we went into this just trying to have fun, you know, not trying to take anything seriously, and I'd say we went pretty far for our first one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys definitely knocked it out because when you first came to the CCA, we saw the team and we we're like, okay, this is, you know, one of these new teams, not a whole lot of experience. Let's throw them into Division 6 and see what happens. And you guys made a good run through your group. Uh, you, you all played very well um, and made the playoffs, obviously falling just a little bit short. Um, but now that you guys are in Div 5, I, I already have a, a, a lot of hope for you guys again as well. Um, I think you might have... Did I pick you guys for my fantasy? I I, I want to say I did, but um, I don't want to say something that isn't true here. I want to say I picked you guys for my fantasy because I only pick California teams uh, for, for my fantasy. And I think you're the only California team in Div 5. Uh, so, oh no, I might have picked the Titans of Alterna Blue. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, <laughs> make make me regret that choice. Okay, it's just not that counts. We'll remember this. I mean, I mean, we'll definitely see you in the play in the playoff match when we have Fullerton versus Dominion Bills. <laughs> Uh, that will be the hope. That will be the hope. So, um, but anyways, <laughs> thank you both for that introduction. Uh, so yeah, as we had said, you know, you you are uh, a relatively new team for the academic year, uh, starting in season four, and had that impressive Div Six run. So, how have you guys grown since the start of season four? What did you all learn from last season that you are incorporating into your recent developments coming into this season? Um, yeah, yeah. So I would probably say that we're pretty adoptable. I mean, uh, in terms of uh, learning the, you know, what the opponent's strategy is. Um, I think in the beginning, though, it was hard uh, communicating, getting used to that, especially because none of us had that experience. Um, but now the difference is uh, the communication definitely has gotten better. Um, strategy has gotten better for sure. Um, and that's all I have to say on that, yeah. Okay. Huh. I don't know if you uh, need to add to that, Jalen. Yeah, the way I see what we learned compared to last season is that it kind of took a while to like kind of build up that synergy because when we started CCA last season, we literally like we signed up the day like the day they were due like the day the applications were going to be due. <laughs> due and so like we had just met that day too so we were all like we were all trying to get to know each other i remember the first things we asked were like oh what kind of weapon do you mean and we had a lot of like we were a lot of like shooters only one person said du and duallys and another person said a charger and so i was like okay so I gotta get to like learn like how they play it if that's the only weapon they pretty much use. So um um so yeah, it kind of just took a while. We played like off tournaments and all that, and then we kind of just learned to how to complement each other's styles to know like who who's best to to take over in what situation and. 
we kind of just we just built up like that synergy and we just decided it's our first time so we're like we're on the roll let's just keep it going nice <clears throat> all right um well cool thank you for that um so bouncing to something between season four and season five we did have the cca road trip at irvine valley college and for those of you that are listening to this that are unaware uh cca and irvine valley college collaborated to produce a lan invitational featuring 10 teams uh from southern california uh, to just come and be able to to play an event, you know, of uh, just college teams, especially because Southern California does have a uh, a plethora of just teams available. Um, you know, it, it's it's real. It was really really awesome to be able to put that to, together. So um, I want to you know ask you all, uh, could you speak to the experience of being there in person at CCA Road Trip? You know, given that this was, I believe, your first land experience. Uh, what was it like being able to go in person and compete against all these other colleges? Well, it was very nerve wracking for sure. Uh, in the beginning, we didn't know what to expect um, at all. And I think we played a bunch of uh, some teams that we didn't play against in the previous season, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. So, um, it felt kind of like we got blown out in the beginning because of that lack of experience, but everyone there was really welcoming. I would definitely love to do a LAN again. Um, just being there surrounded by people who all have that passion for the same game that we all play. So it's pretty cool. Nice. Um, yeah, going into the LAN, that, that, like, that being my first ever LAN experience, it was it was I got like really anxious, but I was also really excited for it. I didn't know what to expect, but um, I've seen like those schools play before on live streams, and I'm like, I'm like, wow, they're like, they're they're, they're crazy, and so I didn't look at I didn't look at the divisions, and so I I can't I went in there not knowing what their school's divisions were, and later on I looked at them and I'm like. I'm like, dang, they're like four, four or five divisions ahead of us. I'm like, we got like destroyed, but we we like stuck through it the entire time. Uh, we had our esports like director for our school there with us for it to like, kind of like you know, just to kind of get the whole like idea of what Splatoon is about. And um, yeah, all the schools there were really they were really nice. We know we recognize the fuel schools, especially um, Long Beach, because Long Beach is pretty close to our campus as well. And so mm -hmm. our, our our schools have like conjoined esports events. But I enjoyed doing it. I want to go again, just to you know, because I'm I'm pretty sure I've definitely grown as a player back from compared to back then. And so I want to. You know, I want to win a few games rather than last than not win any from the last time. Yeah. Yeah, totally fair. Uh, first land experience is always rough. Uh, I can certainly attest to that. So, and at the same time, you know, because it, we were so restricted within that road trip to the number of teams, we wanted to really focus on uh, ensuring that uh more universities were represented um and unfortunately it just kind of meant that a lot of these other schools like long beach you know ucsd uh whatever like their all of their varsity teams came through that were like div one div two um and we were like well you know we, we immediately saw that uh division disparity and we were like you know at the very least this will hopefully be a good experience for you all uh to be able to get that uh competition in the goal hopefully for next time which given you know i think that things went well all things considered um after the variety of technical difficulties uh where we were quickly rewiring everything in the first like 30 minutes to an hour um to get everything up and running but but yeah i, I think for sure in the future where we could get more teams um to be able to come through I think uh, competition will also just even out more as well. So, so I, you know, for your first experience, I think you guys did fantastic, and it was honestly just an honor to have you all there. 
Well, thank you so much for considering us. That was kind of like a shocker when Jalen had told the team, like, oh, we got invited to Atlanta. And we're like, oh my God, it'd be really cool to go and just, you know, experience that whole LAN opportunity. But definitely, for sure. Yeah. And and I will also plug SoCali really quick. Like, if you all are ever able to make it out there I, uh, to, f uh, I believe that one's in Fullerton. Um, they're moving venues, but I believe the venue is still going to be in Fullerton whenever they, that gets up and running again. Um, that could also be a really good opportunity to come and, you know, play games in person on LAN uh, and, you know, be able to just continue to get practice in that setting. So, so for sure, like, whenever that comes around, I will send that to you all because I think you guys should be there too. So, <laughs> hopefully. Sounds good for me. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I do think the the best part in terms of land is like the game is are, are like nice, but I think it's the the connections you make. So if you made like rivals and like new friends at the land, I think that's just the win that you're in the books. And it was mm -hmm. pretty cool because I think I think a couple days or a day before the side order DLC had came out, so we were just watching oh. everyone play that too. <laughs> yeah, before during warm up, everyone yeah just playing that. I, I haven't even like I haven't even bought it yet, so I was like, dude, I gotta see how this looks. <laughs> Honestly, same though. Like I was watching everyone play it. I'm like, I have not even like even now. I still have not opened side order. So, <laughs> what are you scared of? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll just I just haven't had time to get around me. I need to fix it soon. I I, I will fix it. I will fix it. <laughs> uh, all right, Alexa, go go ahead and take it away. Next uh, to our next question. Yeah. Uh. I. I. Yeah. Uh. With that, we, uh, moving back on track, uh, so uh, with the uh, creation of, you know, your uh, esports group at uh, Dominguez Hills, um, is there like any like, f like far future hopes of like what you want to do it? Like in terms of like how, like how much, do you, is there a certain amount of support you want from esports? Is there like a certain amount of uh, like division you're aiming for in CCA or is like, creating new team even more teams like what exactly are like would the, like i guess goals that i at uh domingo Hill would be for you guys um so uh right now the way our school's esports program entirely works is that you kind of start off as a, a club team and so those club teams are basically people who are playing for fun and if you can if you, your team stays like stable for two semesters like you're not like at risk of like losing um, as many players as you need then you can get promoted to like a, a cart like a, a cardinal team or varsity jv and so at that point is when there's more more like deadlines or more like requirements you need to meet as a team like you need to have like an in-person kind of a practice once a week you need to fill out these forms that like that like put into a, a Google calendar calendar of all esports teams that are going to be having some type of thing going on. And so basically at that point, that just means like, you know, you got to start taking it really seriously. And we, we do, I did just recently get that approval. So I'm kind of moving up from where, from where we are now. And so I'm hoping to continue going. I do know after this semester, um, one of our players, Miles, will be graduating. And so, and another one, Danny, uh, he might be stepping down. So, um, as a captain, my, like, my goal for this team is trying to, you know, kind of spread, spread the word about it and get more recruitment in. And maybe, just maybe, if I could, I could start up a second team because i know the cca allows you to have up to that many people but yeah i kind of just want to make it grow at least before i'm able to graduate but i want to at least leave something makes sense makes sense yeah um, how about you uh mish like i mean the this question can apply to just individual growth, uh, at, uh, but I mean, or do you think you have other goals that may not be like be different, like even further than like what J Jalen Jalen 
Paz, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You got it right. Um, I think for me, well, first off, as an individual, I would like to be a reliable support for the team, especially, um, you know, being at the front of the lines um, most of the time. Um, just trying to be, uh, you know, not somebody who falls off easily, but somebody who is consistent with the results. Um, in terms of the team, I just, like Jalen said, definitely moving the team towards varsity level uh, Cardinal. But also seeing something at the LAN kind of made me, like, curious, you know. I did see some teams get some type of coaching from the varsity teams, uh, I think JV teams. But definitely some type of feedback from a coach or a mentor um, who has that competitive experience that can definitely show us a perspective outside what we see on the um, in the game. So, um, and definitely also more awareness to Splatoon. I mean, I think it's crazy that we just got enough people to join for to make one team. But if we have more to make a second team, that would be great, you know. Definitely bringing a, a star to our jerseys at the school would be cool. Awesome. Um, and I know, Jalen, I think you touched on this a little bit, but uh, let, let's talk uh, briefly about the CSUDH esports program. So it sounds like, first of all, you might have, if things continue to, uh, to trend in the right direction, you might have a bit of a small rebrand next year from possibly Ivory to Cardinal. Is that, is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, once we, so the, the club teams at our school, it's kind of like different names. So, you know, yeah. um, say we have like Valorant, Pearl, or I think it's League or anything. It, it's just, they can't be Cardinal or Gold because Cardinal means varsity and Gold is for JV. Gotcha. So if, if we do make that switch, then we would be switching over from Splatoon Ivory to the Splatoon Cardinal. Okay, I, I, I like that little transition there just to kind of signify the, the growth of the program itself. Um, so that that's really awesome. And then I also understand that you all, uh, you all have a relatively new esports arena as well. So um, do you guys, you know, get the opportunities to, to use that for like practice or matches or anything like that? Or, you know, what, what are the vibes there? Because I, I just find it really cool when teams are able to uh, have those esports arenas on campus. Um, and even and especially the fact if it's if a Splatoon team gets to use it. So I'm just curious. We do. We do have a thing on campus. Um, we haven't used it for like say like our weekly games not not recently i would like to because um just recently we were, were able to hire uh, a new staff who was able to keep the arena open for later hours and so um because before we were playing our games at like maybe 5 p.m but that's exactly when the arena would close but now <laughs> it should be open for later than that so i haven't try to get i go in there every now and then to like actually play i bring my dock and all that and i can play but um and mish has been in there with me before too playing but as a full team we haven't uh played in there like as a full team of four gotcha okay no, no, that, that's good to know. And, and, you know, I know we we talked a little bit about, you know, road trip uh, and CSUDH, whatever. So, um, you know, it, it really is awesome what you guys have going there as just a whole esports program. Um, and your director was absolutely fantastic to talk with as well. Like he, he just seems awesome all around. Uh, so ho hopefully we can continue to see uh, a lot more growth there just overall. Uh, and I'm super, super excited for where you guys are, are going just uh, from the program standpoint. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I think the the good thing about the esports program and especially our director is that they've been very supportive despite not knowing how Splatoon works. <laughs> They're very uh, adamant about getting us to play and then getting us to play in the right setting. So we really do appreciate that support as well. That's 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 very nice. Uh, having a, your full backing of your esports coordinator, like just being like you guys can do this i think that's something that is sometimes a little bit like yeah definitely and then he was the one that was giving us the what is it the moral the words of support during that land tournament when we weren't doing that well <laughs> mm. 
Well. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, I'm going to try and move on to talking a little bit more about Ivory themselves with how you guys have been doing in season five. Everything else was kind of like the, you know, the pre season five questions to get to know a little bit more about Ivory, but we got to know about how good are you guys really? Like, uh, so, uh, in your week one, you had a, you took Undertow Dartfish, a season three, like, I guess veteran per se, since they're t they are an older team than you guys, all the way to game seven and took that set away from Undertow. I'm curious, what did you guys think about that? Like, did you guys know anything about Undertow, Dartfish, or like anything like that? Um, we didn't know a single thing about them. Uh, I kind of, um, I kind of, I, I, I didn't know, like, how long they started but i had an idea that they were uh significantly like older than us and so um that was our week one game was it yes yeah all uh, right so for our week one um you know usually you're able to, to start like you're able to um see all the results of people's past games we kind of usually we use that to kind of like build up like a team strategy and since last season our first our first ever match they had to reschedule so we're like oh man we're not gonna get to play the first week and then our second week was an off week so we didn't play at all of that one and then the third week so many other teams have already played by then that i was able to kind of like see uh, where where all the teams were headed and so i was like okay so we gotta go we gotta do all that but this season uh, we were like, all right, we're just going to have to wing it first match. Let's just try to kind of use like our main weapons and kind of just scout out what they use. And so after that very first match, we were like, okay, they're using this. So we're going to use this type of weapon. They're using that. Uh, maybe I shouldn't use this one and should use this instead. So kind of we, we just we try to adapt as quickly as possible. I mean, that's very commendable. Being able to adapt within a set is very hard sometimes. So, you know, against what essentially is your, like, the, in your group's, like, first seed, um, that's just insane, but that's just big props to you guys. And then... To, to kind of add on to that as well, because, yeah, I mean, given that it was a game seven that you all went to, that is, honestly, especially in a week one, that that could certainly be very nerve wracking where you're like, oh, gosh, it's way too early for us to be in these clutch situations. <laughs> um, oh, uh, yeah, we, we had such a we had such a huge lead. I think we had a two game lead on them. And at that point, because we needed one more to win. Um. What was it? I, oh, we, we had a, a new girl on the team and we wanted to give her kind of that experience of playing. And so um, we, yeah, we, we, um, I was like, okay, let's, let's swap her in for maybe two games just to kind of get her her first win. Cause she, she'd done numerous practices with us before. And, um, yeah, we kind of did that. And then they were somehow able to bring that lead back up. So I was like, oh man. So now we got to now we got to like, we gotta take this seriously, because we had a we had a two point we had a two game lead. So I was like, oh, we got this in the bag. But then they they came up two games in a row. I was like, all right, we can we gotta stop this. Well, you guys clutched it. I mean, they, that's what matters. So I mean, I I certainly look forward to learning more about your your new teammate. Uh, and they hopefully get uh get her you know first win under the belt. Um, so you know, but it seems like you guys uh kind of had a good plan there in uh in place. You know, definitely f uh flirted a little bit with danger, but um nonetheless, you guys pulled it out. And I mean, I I think that's a really like fun way to be able to start the season at the very least is to have like just that high pressure moment so early on and that way the rest of the season if you end up in that situation again you're like hey we've been here before so at least that's how i personally would uh would view it i mean I, you guys can certainly you know say no that's a terrible idea uh, 
<laughs> but uh, I guess, you know, how what kind of tone does that set for the rest of the season, though? So the rest of the season, I'm thinking that, you know, um, I don't know what these I, I have yet. To, I mean, we've been kind of looking into the next teams. We see that um, the uh, the white tips or I, I forgot how the name is pronounced. The name. The we, Bullshark we White that, Tips. Yeah, Bullshark White Tips. We see that their team recently played the team we're supposed to play after them. They played each other in a live stream. And so Mish <laughs> brought that stream up to me and I was watching it. And so I'm kind of trying to trying to learn what it's like. But the coming into these next seasons, I'm just, you know, I got to be confident in myself, confident in my team that we will be able to do good and at least come out with a few wins. Yeah. So, yeah. So hey, you're one or two teams that are 2-0 right now. So that's certainly, you know, you guys are on the right track to start. Uh, I know the other team that's 2-0 right now, you guys don't play them until week five. So that's going to be a fun one to see for sure. Um, but before we get too ahead of ourselves, um, Alexa, any other questions regarding Undertow Dartfish match? Because I, I know that was kind of one of the key ones that we were looking at here. You know, seven game set, uh, always super exciting to talk about. We might have lost Elixir for a sec. Well, I think while Elixir is kind of in and out here, uh, do you guys have anything to add on to to that seven game set with uh, Undertow Dartfish? I think I said everything. Do you wish? Uh, no, not really. It's just like Jalen said again. We, especially in the beginning of the the week, we had no idea who we we're going up against. Um, I'm not sure if some of these, uh, the teams that we played against in the last season, uh, Division 6 have moved up to Division 5, but it does seem like we're playing a couple of new ones that uh, we still need to study for a little bit. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I think we might have Elixir back now. <laughs> so, um... Cool. Well, let's talk very briefly about the the, the most recent match, uh, Shugs. Uh, so, following your game seven clutch, uh, you played against Shug Splatoon and won that one four to one. Um, so, you know, with those two wins now under your belt, um, it does you know set a precedent for you all for the rest of the season to just try and keep some of this momentum going. Uh, so, you know, what is working well for your team right now, and is there anything that you all need to continue to address as we progress to the back half of the regular season? Right now, what's working well for like our team? I think it's like kind of. Um, we, we don't want to like make bad bad decisions that were like our own choices. So usually what we do a lot is when like before the game is about to start, when we talk about what we're going to use, we try to like, get that kind of approval from our team. Like, should I use this? Should I run these? Like, you know, like it's a, this will help me to kind of focus on this objective. It'll help me to capture the zone or stay on the tower for longer. And so kind of we, we kind of we, we influence each other's choices rather than just making up our own thing and then not telling everyone what we're doing exactly. OK, yeah, yeah it's more about the uh, the synergy of how well are these weapons going to work together for this mode on this stage? Um, can this weapon be a good support for this and that? But yeah. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I think that the, the Shugs match certainly, um, you know, is very telling of what you all are capable of this season. Um, you know, I, I think you guys actually came into this as uh, the sixth seed within your group, and now you're already at top of the standings, um, which is pretty massive. Uh, so very, very impressed, at least uh, coming, uh, at least from my end uh, here. So um, as I guess now we look towards those future weeks, I know you touched on this a little bit, um, but is there any teams that remaining that are you kind of have circled on your schedule to be like, hey, this is this is the match that we are looking forward to playing or anything, uh, any sort of, uh, you know, I guess, yeah, just any matchups you're looking forward to in particular. 
Um, I believe there are. Mish, you did some deep diving into them, but I don't remember the names of them. Do you remember what they were? Well, I think for me, one of them would be based off the stream that we had seen for the team we're going to be playing against this week would be the Table Troop Tope or something. Table Troop Troop. Yeah, you have them week yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah, week four. They're definitely somebody that, you know, watching the stream, they look like they have a lot of synergy in the matches. So definitely them for sure. Nice. Yeah, that one actually really should be exciting, at least in my opinion, because you both were Division Six playoff teams that came up short in the first round. So I think that's going to be an interesting storyline here to follow uh, as, you know, two teams that you know, made the Div 6 playoffs, now playing in Div 5. Can they, you know, make it to the Div 5 playoffs now? Um, and you both actually are on track because both of you are undefeated. I think Table Trip Troop had to reschedule their Week 2 match. So they're only 1-0 right now, according to the record books. Um, but you guys, you know, have started off, you know, very well, 2-0. Uh, um, so, you know, I, I think this will be a certainly fun collision course between these two teams that have already started off the season on the right foot right team that you said is also undefeated right now uh splatscad yellow okay yeah that's another team that i'm looking forward to playing against them okay well. yeah. nice yeah I, that should be fun for sure uh so that'll be week four week five back to back there uh, and that that really could shape the entire playoff structure here uh so we'll have to kind of just wait and see <laughs> so on that note, though, um, how far are you all looking to get this season? Do you think that another playoff run is in store? How how far can this team go? I I want to make it the playoffs, uh, and I want to actually like at least get further than I did last time. Um, I would like to. I would really like to maybe. I, I like to win the playoffs, of course, but um, I want to at least. Since um, we may be down two players by the end of the season, I want it to be there. The, I want that last one to like kind of have a good memory to it, just to know like you know we 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 started from pretty much nothing and made all the way this far. Nice. <laughs> Mish, anything to add to that? Uh, not really. Definitely, I think we uh, Jalen and. The rest of the team, we both have, uh, we've, all of us have talked about it before, you know, trying to get as far as we can for the two members that are going to be leaving us soon and definitely set the stage for the next team um, and show them what we're capable of and how far we can go in, in terms of playoffs. But I would like us to go farther too um, than we did last season. But yeah. Hey, our fingers are crossed for you guys. So it, it's, uh, you guys are a fun team to watch, and I, I look forward to seeing what you all are able to do. Um, but I guess with that said, Elixir, let's bring us home here. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, I'm so <laughs> this is like the easiest portion to. Um, but um, uh, is there anything that yeah the you guys want to like plug for yourselves, like your esport links or your teams twitters or like anything like anything you want to promote essentially yeah um our follow our school's instagram page our school's esports it should be it should be esports underscore csudh and it should it has a link tree with just about all of our other sites you know our discord twitter all that Huh? All right. Uh, is there anything you guys want to plug about yourselves? Like, do you guys have your own individual Twitters or send out our inks or, you know, <laughs> a squid board? I, I, I do, but I'm not going to plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, I myself, I don't, I don't do anything now. I have a Twitch. It's uh, Jalen9009. I haven't streamed in about two years, but I want to, and I just, I, I just, I gotta get the motivation to it for it. But I will eventually. 
hey, this this could be that motivation. <laughs> now now that people are aware to go follow Jalen on Twitch. <laughs> your 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 Splatoon matches are perfect content farm. Uh, like no, I I, I do want to I want to get them streamed. I just know it's a whole process. I gotta I gotta get to it sometime. <laughs> No, nah, for sure, for sure. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, we greatly appreciate it, especially with all of the scheduling shenanigans that went into this. So I'm just very grateful we had the opportunity to chat with you all and get you all the spotlight that we think you rightfully deserve after the start you've had. Um, so I'm looking forward to continuing following you all, uh, and I hope the rest of the CCA community is too. Uh, but with that said, we're going to go ahead and sign this one off for now. This has been DRF and Elixir, joined by Jalen and Mish from CSUDH Ivory. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. You as well. Thank you. Thank you.